I'm Gloria Gonzalez Fuster, I'm a research professor at the Free University of Bra Brussels, the VUB in Brussels. I'm a research professor at the Faculty of Law and Criminology, and I'm the co director of a research group which is called the Law, Science, Technology and Society Research Group. We do many things, uh, research about law and technology, everything that is related to law and technology, but I work specifically mostly on data protection, privacy, and fundamental rights in the digital uh, sphere. One of the reasons why it's important for me to talk about feminist data protection is because many people misunderstand what data protection is about. They think they have heard about the GDPR. It's a boring thing that it's useless. It's about consenting to some cookies and just uh, closing pop-ups, something that doesn't make sense. And the idea of talking about feminist data protection is to try to believe in the uh, divergent power of, of data protection, which is really something more, which is about uh, having a series of rights some control about what happens when somebody processes data about you. So it is about saying, yes, you can use the information, go create your network, it's very fine, but you cannot just do it on your own, we have to negotiate somehow what happens there. This is basically, in a nutshell, what data protection is about. And feminist data protection is to think also about the power relations that are in place when this is happening. I can say what is my, my favorite uh, technical tools are just electronic music uh, tools. I really like technology and I like more and more to play with uh, electronic uh, devices. I think it's, it's a fascinating world, uh, the way in which we have now uh, like hardware devices that imitate software. And, and that's, uh, that's really, really interesting that we have uh, a lot of technology that is being created now that it's like reproducing uh, mistakes of the technologies of the past. I think it's very, very inspiring when we think also about the relation between the laws and, and technologies, how these technologies have been doing uh, strange things and now we love the way in which they did strange things and how the, the laws that we have relate also to all this for me. It's very, very interesting. Now, what is my list of uh, technological device? Uh, it's a very, very uh, complicated question. I don't know, I don't like cars. Are cars a technological device? I don't like cars, but I don't have a special uh, reason why. Uh, my name is Mario Santa Maria. I'm based in Barcelona and I'm a visual artist and work with technology and different kind of uh, formats. I, I study fine arts. My background is uh, sculpture, but um, I, I was moving uh, to um, cinema and net art and now I'm working more close to performance in some way but at the same time I use photography a lot. Yeah, yeah, the cables, no? These kind of cables are in between the walls in our houses, no? These kind of cables are under the, under the beach. These kind of uh, cables are hidden, but connect the, the, the wall and create like a new layer of something. Um, I don't know, I, I, I hate emails. I think uh, uh, emails de destroy part of my life and I have to, <laughs> I have to deal with, uh, uh, I don't know, in the, in the professional way, no? how to manage this kind of technologies entering, entry, entering at your home and how to yeah, deal with this uh, friction. the auto reply um, 
my name is Sarah Grant. I'm an American artist living in uh, Berlin. And um, I'm also a teacher and um, a professional software uh, developer. So I'm kind of juggling three different jobs, and uh, not jobs, but careers at once, but they overlap um, with each other because the artwork that I'm making is basically uh, software-based and um, also looking at technology and some of the political and social and, well, the issues and also some of the poetics of it. Um, for Divergent Networks, I um, gave an artist talk in which I explained um, the part of my practice that's interested in looking at more than human processes and ways of networking and connecting. Um, so I, I presented um, my work that I've been doing with slime molds. Um, uh, the last piece that I did with them was called Fizerum Topologies, where I um, looked at how the slime mold, which lives its life as a network, how it would network, um, how it would connect itself within an environment um, when presented with one of the seven uh, foundational network topologies designed by humans. So it's basically bringing the natural network, uh, like co confronting it with human networks and, and seeing how, like what it does. Okay, so radical is a very loaded word, obviously, and, and the meaning of it, I think, almost changes uh, from generation to generation. But I think, one, um, I think one base definition of radical could be something that's basically going, at, um, going against the grain, going against what is supposed to be done with a thing. I, I, anyway, that's how I define it in terms of radical networks. And uh, when I think about the internet and social media and things like this, I feel like uh, the values that those systems were designed for were for, uh, were for productivity and efficiency and, resil and resiliency um, in the name of um, you know, democracy and capitalism and, and these very uh, you know, loaded um, political systems. So anyway, when I think of, of, of radical networks, I think about networks that were designed by people who sometimes get left out of those priorities um, or out or who have maybe different value systems or who are even you know um, uh, disadvantaged by by the system itself 